Mali Mkombo, who is the Kenya Rugby Union Director of Youth Development, is still with us on this particular platform talking about the state of rugby in the country. My name is Max Olasike, Ken Andrew is still with us. And so, Malimu, yeah. you are talking to us about, you know, nurturing of talent at, and how schools have contributed immensely towards, you know, growth of the game, you know, churning a lot of talent to the uh, national teams. But there has been <coughs> that problem of lack of continuity. You find yeah. a player has sparkled at school level, but you never get to know where they vanished. Yeah. You see, now, now, now the, the, that, that's, that's where we, we used to have uh, that initial problem. But uh, what the Kenya Rugby Union now is doing is tracking down those players and, yes. and looking at their pathway. And that's why we be able to get these players to, to, to Kenya Rugby Union. We talk to them and we will be able to advise them on the uh, direction they are supposed to take. Uh, but, uh, you know, in the past, uh, 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 a guy, uh, you'd be able to just get a good guy. Probably he's playing for Kamega or Butla and, or probably Murumishiri High School. They go to, like, I, I took them to East Africa and we won uh, Rugby Sevens. Uh, that's in Gulu uh, in 2018. But see now, quite some of the guys who disappeared. But see now, if you can be able to take these guys and win East Africa, that means these are the guys that you're supposed to track them and uh, be able to put them in the, in the right condition and uh, the right pathway so they can be able to represent the, the national team. But at times, they, some of them disappear. One, one, reason, one of the reasons they disappear, probably they don't get a good club. Uh, some of them relocate to different places where they know there's no rugby. Uh, at times, there's also commitment with the education and also pressure from, probably from the parents. They want them to study and like uh, the sports because that, that's our curriculum also. We also blame the school curriculum where it doesn't identify the talents because they emphasize so much on, uh, on the results of at school. And uh, uh, once someone has not performed well in school, then that means now they, that's the end of uh, life for this guy. But now as uh, things are going on, the curriculum is also changing, and probably also advising uh, the stakeholders of education on the different path they are supposed to take, um, like what the Western countries have taken, where they just have a curriculum for sports. And so that, that, that's where we have been having an issue also. Curriculum has also contributed to a big, a big role of uh, these players being uh, disappearing. But what we've put now in place, um, uh, probably the regions, and we also have the regional development of uh, who are who are monitoring these players across the country and uh, bring them together. I think we'll now be able to track them. But initially, that was the the key problem where these players used to outstanding players actually they could be able just to disappear. Can yourself, you are. At Upper Hill, and you know nowadays Upper Hill doesn't churn a lot of talent to the uh, national teams because my friend Peter Orero, now Kibra member of parliament, left and joined Jamuri. And uh, you know, it boils down to the passion of these teachers. He's a uh, uh, prominent teacher as well, so he, he knows and understands better. But uh, I'm sure you are in agreement that uh, school has been very paramount in shaping the development of the game locally not only rugby but football as well yeah yeah yeah. and as you know as you said you know you you get nothing for playing rugby you know they just focus on the academics mostly because after you've played for the three four years you know everything comes down to the kcse you know that's what it comes down to you know that's why you find many people when they choose kcse and they do it and they do not get you know max enough marks to go to university they even stop playing the game you know they should have a, a system that ensures you know whatever grade you take there is something to carry on because talent is not dependent on academic excellence you can get the, the grade you, you get whichever it is but still play rugby so i feel like there should be a system like uh, if we look at how american sports is you know they, they always get their athletes not from academies and all they get them from high schools and universities you know because you know there is like NBA, talent, yeah, like the NBA, and even we are seeing it happen in the in the MLS, you know, in the American football, you know, something like that has really helped helped US, you know. We we see we've seen it, how it's helped them. In they they've made the World Cup. They have a really young squad, and also if you look at the NBA, the the, the best players, all their best, they are drafted through the high schools. And some of them, early college, they come into it. So, you know, you can't blend the two. It's just that the curriculum here in Kenya has not allowed it to happen. So I feel like moving forward, because, you know, high schools, universities, a lot of young players together, you know, there's no limit to the number of players you can get, you know, in a term, 10, 15. So, you know, they have to find a way to totally integrate, you know, the ones who want to keep on studying, they keep on studying. But the ones who want to play seriously, you know, there's an avenue that takes them. Mm. And I think that's why during the just uh, yeah. concluded uh, Kenya Sports Secondary School Association games, yeah. we yeah. saw new champions in yeah. my local school. <laughs> when I throw a stone from 
my home to that school i yeah. think it's just a few miles away koyonzo koyonzo yeah doing very well and yeah. performing uh, excellently good yeah. as far as the school games are concerned alongside butula yeah. and uh, i think they went to east african school games yeah. and yeah. the heavyweights the teams that we used to performing yeah. very well in kakamega high school st peter's mumias yeah. not uh, uh, doing better which means there is you know the the, the games are growing yeah, but it's also it also now depends. The way you're saying the games are growing, and when you have uh, new schools also coming up and winning, I think it's um, it's it's quite something quite good. And like when we just have the usual schools winning, though in other countries you could find that uh, playing rugby schools will always be uh, playing. Uh, <laughs> we always go and win the, the championship, like Peru in South Africa. That's in Cape Town. You see, just predominantly known for for rugby, and uh, like Namiriango in in Uganda. Uh, those are ginger ginger school, Koyonzo. But now you see uh, in Kenya, the issue is about the Ketripolese, and Ketripolese, normally these schools are managed by the principals, and we have some principals who are pro, 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 pro sports and others yes. are just pro-academic. So once, once a principal is posted... And others are both. Yeah, others are both, yeah, <laughs> they, they balance, yeah, and, and that, 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 that's very good. But probably you can be able to see some schools that were doing so well, like Lenana, Nairobi School, uh, you can be able to see uh, Upper Hill, Dagoreti, uh, yeah, St. Mary's, you can be able to Kakamega High School. But see now, what's happening now? You see now, uh, because some of these principals probably were posted to the other schools. So the one who came in, uh, you see, that there was that issue of delocalization where they were delocalizing the principals. So uh, once, once, once they were doing that, these who came in, they, 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 they had to come in with their own methods of, uh, of, 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 of operation. And that's where now the sports uh, in some of these schools are disappeared. But uh, I think what's supposed to do the way you've said the curriculum, they must have the curriculum where they, even these principals and uh, the, the managers of the school, they should be told sports will be a priority. And once that one is a priority, because we have athletes who earn millions of money and they, they generate a lot of income from sports. And once that is done, you to identify the talent of the students and then you bring it up. When I went to Morimushira High School with a teacher, you know, these are schools from East and the people wondering how can they play rugby? But I said I have the interest and these guys are here, I'll be able to identify and them. They and did, they they defied yeah. all odds. They defied all the odds. They won and they went the Nationals won. They went to South Africa and they were, they were champions of East Africa. And that tells us there's a lot of talent in this particular school that can be able to be tapped. But now it also depends with the, the management and the part of the income that the, 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 the government is supposed to put in these schools especially for the curriculum activities. Once that one is put, it works out well and uh, the schools will be able to do well. But this one, the way you're saying the aunt school used to do well, but now it's not doing well, it's just that uh, about the management of this school, which is not supposed to be. It's supposed to be those talents should be able to continue and uh, be channeled up. But what we're doing with the Kenya Rugby Union, uh, what we're doing with as much as uh, these schools, they, we, we identify the sports in the particular schools and we are offering them training. Like uh, two weeks ago, it was in happening in Akur before they closed in Akur, where we brought all the schools from that particular region and they were being trained. Some applied to Busia and all that. Like Butla is doing well because the, the teacher from Mumia's uh, sports, uh, Shimenga. She yeah. now moved to Butler, is teaching in Butler, and that's why Butler went to East Africa. Now it's another guy also, Okwemba, also in, uh, in Koyonzo. And now you see Koyonzo is now doing well because there's a teacher who is identifying the, the talent in that particular school, which I uh, think from the universities, from uh, the colleges, they should be able to have the sports teachers and post at these particular schools to do what? To go and uh, tra train, train, the, uh, train those players. But uh, what we're also doing about the universities and colleges, we're also training the teachers at the universities and also uh, sports teachers and also the coaches and uh, also in the, uh, in the colleges. So that when these guys graduate from uh, high school, they go to colleges, they'll be able to meet these uh, guys to be able to continue with their sports. And that's why you can be able to see like Scala Gala is doing well oh. because we have a guy there who is, uh, who've been trained by Kenya Rugby Union. Ken, the same performance that happened in East Africa school games in Kenya Secondary Sports School Association games needs to be replicated in Kenya Cup so that at least that monotony of us getting new champions comes to an end because as we speak Kenya Cup is underway and Cabras look like they are the favourites to clinch the championship. Malim, is that the case? Tell no. us about the run so far. No, okay, they, they just started, these are the third week, uh, we can. It is still too early. It's too, too, <laughs> it's still too early. Include. Yeah, but, but at least you can tell. Yeah, it's shaping up, yeah. Okay, that also tells us on uh, off-season training. That means uh, that the guys, Cabras, KCB, uh, Black Blood, you know, they had a very nice uh, off-season uh, training. I remember this is the second season uh, from uh, the COVID, whereby teams had uh, some very difficult time. But uh, once it's happening like that, we can be able to, uh, you know, normally when you start, uh, 
coaches are also trying to assemble their team and see who can play well, who can be fit well here. So by the third, the fourth phase now, we'll be able now to see uh, how the line, how it is shaping. But uh, it's when the team picks up early, like Cabras and uh, KCB, that tells us, uh, I think these are the guys for, for this particular season and they are prepared well. Though uh, other teams will be able to come in, they might... Uh, if they could, they need to also to maintain that consistency. But some coaches also now they learn they can go and back to condition their players. So when you have uh, the the, the mid-season break, when they come back probably in the in February in January the mid-January uh, season, you find that now they have condition and they are playing different uh, uh, type of rugby. Western Bulls is a team that I support. Unfortunately, not in Kenya Cup. You root for which side? Uh, personally, you know, I'm connected to a team that's in the championship. You know, the Falcons rugby. And I've been following them for the, the past two game weeks and even before that and looking at the table. They have had, there's a, a, a couple of university teams in the championship that are doing well. And you know, I've looked a lot at the Falcons because I know they had a great contingent of players who came in. They even played for the under 20, you know, yeah. guys like uh, Randy, Emmanuel, they were selected and went to the under 20 and yeah. played. So I'd ask, you know, what, what do you make of it? The number of varsity teams, you know, coming up. and. Yeah. Uh, will there be an upset because, you know, there's ZTEC have also been doing so well, you know, USA is there, Kabarak, you know. Can one of them, you know, make Kenya Cup and actually, you know, do something great from the performance? Yeah. Because we've had Strat Mulios yeah, in Strat Kenya Mulios. Cup for a while without getting other yeah. university side. KU yeah. was Kenya there, machine, but uh, I think they got relegated and so as Mean Machine, mean machine of yeah, UN. Yeah, actually, yeah, they, they have uh, uh, three teams, university teams in Kenya Cup. We have my machine was promoted. Uh, your team is now playing. Um, then we also have uh, Swatmo University and Kenyatta University Black Blood. You know they are doing well. Initially we used to have also Jaiqua who are playing well. But uh, although you are saying uh, Falcon is coming up well now they're in championship, and if they win in final now they'll be able to find themselves in the championship. But Bozira is doing a, a good job, and uh, Mr. Masiga in terms of recruitment, and sometimes they even uh, reach out to me to see if they can be able to get some contact from players uh, who are graduating from uh, from high school, uh, good players. So you see now that kind of uh, that kind of um, identifying of the players and and. Uh, checking on their pathway, it, 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 it's key uh, in terms of uh, having a very strong team and that's actually what Desta is, uh, is doing. And uh, with Desta is also one of uh, the universities to watch. Uh, probably the next season, they'll be in the league of um, Stratimore and uh, Black Blood and Mean Machine. Yeah. Malim, generally your last sentiments regarding state of the game, uh, Ripper Charge. Yeah. Of course, Simba's heading into that direction. They were not successful to qualify for Rugby World Cup in France sure. next year. Yeah. And they bowed out. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's the way forward like? Because sevens and fifteens, yeah. things haven't been, you know, quite smooth. But uh, we keep, you know, crossing our fingers and being hopeful, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think just going back and regrouping and coming back stronger. Uh, I think that's uh, what uh, Simba's need to do. Uh, but also we look at uh, the, 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 the mode of uh, uh, repercharge because now it's two years consecutive. We are there in uh, Paris. Uh, I think we just need to qualify directly, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's the way forward. Uh, just to work out and qualify direct because now we look at uh, which are these teams that have been on their way and what are they doing. And Namibia has been away. Uh, Zim also been away in terms of uh, denying us an opportunity to qualify direct for representing Africa as the, 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 the leading uh, side. Uh, okay. Uh, so what we're supposed to do once we, we do that, because repercharge is actually a different way of, if we go for repercharge, then we also need to work out in terms of our ranking and our preparation for the repair because we are meeting uh, different uh, teams uh, which are not the, the level of uh, the African African rugby. So USA, Pojogo, USA has been the World Cup, uh, Pojogo are the same, Hong Kong is also a different. But we, when we play test match, we've won against Pojogo, we've won against uh, Hong Kong. So we just need to maintain that uh, consistency. Then we also look at okay, what went wrong for the two repercharges, the one in Paris and uh, this one in uh, Dubai. What went wrong? Once we can be able to package ourselves and the coaches look at it and come up with a strong team, I think uh, the next uh, 2027 World Cup will be there. Well, it's a pleasure speaking to us, Malim. Thank you for coming through and sharing your fantastic insights regarding the state of the game as far as rugby is concerned. And of course, we're going to be keeping tabs on the same and, how, and see how it pans out going forward. Thank you. Don't go away. Stay tuned. We're coming back with the analysis of what's happening in Qatar as far as 22nd edition of FIFA World Cup is concerned.